Hello, Namaskar and welcome again Z test. Since last few lectures, we are discussing the cases inspired from the real life information or real, real life situation. Since the inception of my this project of uploading my lectures on YouTube channel, I have been receiving so many requests of giving the solutions or guidelines for solving the problems asked in many examinations. It is not at all possible for me to answer each and every question because it will take my time of preparing these lectures in favor of say answering the queries. So from the problems which I have received from many students during the last many months I have selected a few problems and I am going to discuss these problems which are actually unusual. I have preferred taking unusual kinds of problem for discussion at this stage and I hope after learning the solution or discussion on this kind of unusual problems you will be definitely say prepared to face any other kind of problems and to solve the normal problems in your own. So now onwards few lectures will be on the problems asked in universities of uh, say Indian universities and out of which I have selected which are unusual. Let's take the first problem and yeah, on Z test we are continuing. The first problem is after say reading the definition or description of the problem, we will be discussing everything. Why is this Z test? Which kind of test? One test or two test? Everything. Yeah, and please click show more below. Sorry, on your screen to read the problem and many other important things which I have written with the problem. Please. Yeah. The first is in a random sample of 400 persons from a large population, 120 are females. That means total sample size is 400. Out of these 400, 120 are females. The sample has been drawn from a large population. And as we know, large population means a normally distributed population. Can it be said that males and females are in the ratio of 5 is to 3 in the population? That means, say, some statistician or somebody believes that in the whole population, males and females are in the ratio of 5 is to 3. If this information, the same information is taken, the ratio of females to males would be 3 is to 5. This is a belief. And we need to check this belief on the basis of the information available about a sample of 400 persons. Let's first of all write a summary. First statistic available is 400. In a random sample of 400 persons. Yes. From a large population. 120 are females. Okay. Another statistic available is 120. Can it be said that males and females are in the ratio of 5 is to 3 in the whole population? So another statistics available is 5 is to 3. Use 1% level of significance. Okay, 1%. These are the, say, figures or values or amounts or statistics written in the problem. Now, okay, interpretation of these statistics. In a random sample of 400 persons, so this is sample size, that is N, 120 are females, number of females, sign we shall decide later on. Can it be said that the males and females are in the ratio of 5 is to 3 in the population? Yes, ratio of males is to females in the population. This is our null hypothesis actually. 
and use 1% level of significance. Okay. Now everything is upon us. Interpretation and hypothesis and blah blah blah. Okay. Sample size 400. That is very clear. Now number of females 120. What is the use of this? Let's go to the hypothesis. Ratio of males to females in the population is 5 is to 3. Yes, okay. First of all, for the population we believe that ratio of males, females, 5 is to 3. So, proportion of males to total equals to 5 by 8 and proportion of females to total is equal to 3 by 8. Now any one of you from you can say that why should we calculate this? I ask you on the basis of this information what can you calculate? Whether useful or not. Only this one. Okay, so I calculated. And so you need to calculate it. In examination, if you don't know anything or many thing about solving any problem, just try to write this kind of things on the basis of the data available. That may open doors for you to go forward for solving the problem. This is a very say tried and tested, very effective technique. Yeah, okay. Now relevance. See, we have number of females 120 out of 400. So for sample, okay, one similar kind of information is available. Proportion of Females to total and that is 120 divided by 400. I tell this as X and this as N. This is say if we take the reference of probability, this is something like favorable cases. XC1 if one female is randomly selected out of 120 the favorable cases will be 120 is to 1 yes and one person is selected random at random from 400 so it will be something like 400 c1 that is 400 so this is proportion of females to total in the sample and that comes to uh, 3 by 10 or point 3. This is for sample, this is for population. Yes, I hope some sparks should have started in your mind. Now, what do we need to do? We need to test this hypothesis. And for that purpose, we need to take 1% level of significance. Now, if we go to select the test, which test? Z, T, F, chi square. Okay. First of all, what is the sample size? 400. Single sample. Single large sample. So this is case of Z test. Very simple. Is there any information about mean or for calculating mean? No. Is there any information for calculating standard deviation or population standard deviation available or not? No. So this cannot be treated as Z-test of single mean. Why single? Because there is only single population and single sample. So this cannot be a case of any other test. So it is Z-test. This cannot be a case of single mean. Because no information about calculating mean and standard deviation is there or they are not readily available. So this is not the case of say, Z test of single mean. Now Z test, single sample or single population, 
there is only one choice z test of single proportion and this is the proof the information is available in such a way that we can just calculate a proportion of females to total number of persons whether in sample or in population so this is the thought process to determine the exact test z test on the basis of the availability of sample information about sample size and then non availability of mean or standard deviation or any ground for calculating them on the other hand the information available is for calculating the proportion only yes so this is the thought process through which we can determine the correct test yes i hope you can understand now some formalities okay for population mean Uh, sorry for population proportion we use the sign capital p and that is given to be 3 by 8 why 3 by 8 and not 5 by 8 because the sample proportion directly available is of females to total so pro population proportion of females to total should be taken for comparison yeah so it is 3 by 8 If three by four is point seven five, three by eight is point three seven five. Okay, yeah. Now sample proportion, p cap or small p cap, cap head, whatever word you use, and that is three by ten. So this is three. Okay. Hmm. Now what? Now now the hypothesis and. Null hypothesis is sorry. Before null hypothesis, let's go for critical value. But before critical value, we should decide whether this is one tail test or two tail test. See, null hypothesis given to be is ratio of males to females in the population is five is to three. Now availability is about the information of females to total. There is there is not a bigger problem. but we take this as null hypothesis yes male and females are in the ratio or proportion of 5 is to 3 in the whole population what if this null hypothesis is rejected what can be our conclusion can we arrive at a very clear conclusion that the ratio of males to females in the population is less than 5 is to 3 or greater than 5 is to 3 no we cannot arrive at that kind of specific conclusion so both sides remain open if the ratio of males to females in the population is not 5 is to 3 we are not in a position to conclude that it is less than 5 is to 3 or it is greater than 5 is to 3 so for us both sides are open so this is pure case of two tail test yes this is pure case of two tail test yes i cannot write this everything here or in the say notes below your video screen so please try to understand when i speak when i discuss this everything every time everything is not possible to write it kills the purpose of video lectures this can be written only in leaflets or say uh, notes or books so please try to understand from the lecture itself two tail test why two tail test if the null hypothesis is that males and females are in the ratio 5 is to 3 in the population is rejected there is no ground of believing that as an alternative the proportion is less than 5 is to 3 or greater than 5 is to 3 so for us both sides remain open if the null hypothesis is rejected so this is case of two tail test yes okay two tail test now critical value okay level of significance sorry 1% that means alpha equals to 0.01 and if this is case of two tail test we should take alpha by 2 0.01 divided by 2 alpha by 2 will come to 0.005 okay yeah so critical value will be yes one uh, two tail test 0.005 
Yes, it comes to 2.576. Okay, now we have to calculate the Z value equals to P cap minus capital P upon yeah here also take care capital P stands for population proportion capital P into 1 minus capital P upon N this is the formula for single proportion okay whether you use P cap or cap sign or not it is now upon you yeah okay uh, point 3 minus 0.375 since the decimal values are very clear without rounding off I am using them 0 0.375 into 1 minus 0 0.375 divided by 400 ok 3.3 minus 0 0.375 that means 300 minus 375 minus 0 0.075 ok yeah, under into under root uh, simplification of this comes to sorry I have a rough work and in which I have directly written the value of the denominator and I hope now you can easily this will be 0.625 and you have to multiply 0.375 with 0.625 the answer will be divided by 400 then equal to then only square root please take care yeah it comes to 0 0.024 so z comes to minus 3.098 yes let's use modulus sign ok z calculated z critical comparison Z calculated is 3.098 ignoring the sign or taking as non-negative and critical value is 2.576 since the calculated value of Z is greater than point, sorry 3.098 yeah it comes to HO is rejected kind of conclusion. Okay, what was the null hypothesis? Males and females are in the ratio of 5 is to 3 in the whole population. Okay, and that means Alternative hypothesis Males and females are not in the ratio of 5 is to 3 in the whole population. That means capital P is not 0.375. Yes, we have no clear idea whether we can conclude that the ratio is less than this or greater than this. So, conclusion will be males and females are not in the ratio of 5 is to 3 in the whole population. Yes, what is the ratio is another task to know about the ratio whether it is greater than this less than this that is another exercise we need to perform the testing of hypothesis only so we tested the hypothesis that on the basis of this sample can we conclude that the ratio of males to females in the population is 5 is to 3 and we concluded that no on the basis of this hypothesis testing we can conclude that the males and females are not in the ratio of 5 is to 3 in the population from which this sample has been drawn. That's it. Thank you very much.